this video, we're going to look at basic concepts for characters in C. First, a brief recap of characters in Python for folks who've seen that language. In Python, characters were really just short strings. And we had separate functions, ORD and CHUR, to convert a character to, to a numeric representation and vice versa. In contrast, C has a built-in char type. And this is really just a kind of number. And it uses just a single byte of storage. Let's look at an example. So this code declares a variable, myChar, of type char, and then initializes it to the character C. And we use single quotes around a single character to represent a character in C. And then in the third line, we use the percent %C format specifier to print out that single character. And so this does what we might expect, and it prints out the character C. Now the next line, we use our integer format specifier. And remember that these characters are actually just a type of number. So the second line here actually prints out the number 67. Now this third printf, we pass 67 as the value, but we use the character format specifier. So that third one actually prints out a C. And then this last bit of code, we increment my char. And remember, a character is just a type of number. So it's going to increment the value of my char. And so this last line is going to print out the letter D. So let's look at another set of examples. Seven ways to say A. Well, the easiest way to print out an A in C is to just use a printf with a single character long string. But now we've seen that we could actually use a format specifier for character and then pass the A character, notice the single quotes, to print F. And that'll also print out an A. Now since characters are just numbers, we can do arithmetic with them. So this again uses the character format specifier, but we print out the character B minus 1. So again, that prints out an A. In this fourth example, notice that I declare a variable of type int. But because int is also a number type, I can assign the character A to it. And then if I print that int using a format specifier for characters, again, I'll get the character A. In this next example, I'm showing another function for printing that we haven't seen yet. And this is the put char function. And put char actually pushes a single character to the output, but without a new line. And so this is useful if we have just a single character to print out. In fact, under the covers, the printf function is implemented using putchar. Now this example is actually using a library function from the ctype library that we'll look at later. And so this takes a lowercase a character, calls the toUpper function to convert it to uppercase, and then uses putchar to display it. We could also use putchar with int types. So we can take our int variable i and use putchar to display its value as a character, and we'll get an a also. And if there are any Canadians in the audience, we can always just print f, a. Eh? Since characters are just numbers, c plus 1 is the same as d. And we can modify char variables just like int variables. So this example actually outputs a lowercase a one character before the lowercase b. To check your understanding of these ideas, see if you can write a for loop that prints the characters from a to z on a single line. Pause the video and give it a try. So here's one way we might solve the problem. In this solution, we're using an int i to control the loop and a char c to track the next character to output. Each time through the loop, we print the character using putchar, and we increment the char variable. Now this solution works, but it's a bit inelegant. Why use two loop variables and increment both of them during the loop? This next solution solves that problem by eliminating the char variable and adding the loop index to the character a each time through the loop. So the first time we get the character a plus 0, that's just a. The next time we get a plus 1, or b, and so on. That's a bit better, but it still has this awkward addition inside the loop. And like the first attempt, we have to know how many characters are in the alphabet. That 26 here is a magic number. Now this last solution is my favorite. It takes advantage of the fact that chars are just numbers. That lets us use a char variable as the loop index. 
We start the loop with C set to A and run until C is no longer less than or equal to Z. Each time through the loop, we print C and we increment it. This version is concise and doesn't use any extra variables beyond what we need to make the solution clear. And the only magic numbers, A and Z, come straight from the problem description. That does it for this video. Until next time, I'm Kurt. Catch you later.